What is up guys, Crash Potato here, and today we're taking a look at Star Citizen 2.5. So yesterday the Star Citizen 2.5 update finally released onto the public server so that everyone can enjoy it. So obviously it's been on the PTU for quite a while, but now everyone gets to enjoy it, not just the, the select few. So what does this update bring? I'm sure a lot of you have already looked through what it brings, but this video I'm just going to talk through what it brings. So one of the biggest things it brings is the Grim Hex Outlaw base. So this is a base for, as you may imagine, outlaws. So the less law-abiding folk can spawn here, I believe. But I couldn't figure out a way of spawning there, so I don't know if you have to be a criminal to spawn there, maybe. But essentially, this is where you you can stay if you want to be a pirate, if you want to be a criminal, if you want to be a mischievous person, then this will be your base because obviously Port Olisar is guarded by UEE patrol ships. So getting out of there as a criminal can be a bit risky sometimes. You get blown up sh as soon as you try and make a run for it. So this will be a way for you to spawn as a pirate. Obviously the downside to that is everybody there is going to be a criminal. So chances are, unless you get familiar with a said criminal, they're probably going to kill you, at least in the alpha stage, they're probably going to kill you because that's that's all people want to do really at the, at the moment. So aside from Grim Hex, the landing system got completely reworked. And I did play around a little bit with the new landing system and I can say it is a hell of a lot better than the old landing system. It is a lot more reliable, it's a lot less clunky. So the landing system previously you would press N on your keyboard if you use a keyboard or whatever you bound it to on a joystick to initiate landing mode and that would then highlight the landing pads and you would press F to select permission to land on one of those pads and then you would go to it and you would do Alt and N to auto land but that would trigger automatically when you got within a certain range and that has been completely reworked and rechanged because there was a lot of things that was very sort of finicky about it the fact that it automatically started auto landing if you had auto land enabled caused some issues sometimes sometimes it would bug out if you came in too fast or if you came in at too weird of an angle the the auto land system just wouldn't know what to do so the way it works now is if you press n you go into landing mode which will deploy your landing gear and it would reduce your speed to landing mode so you no longer have to manually press v to change your flight mode to landing mode as well as pressing N to go into landing mode, that is now in the same thing. So when you press N, your speed is limited to 50. And then you can fly to a pad, it highlights them. It's got a different user interface to highlight in them. And it's also got a beam to show which one you have permission to land on. You don't need to request permission to land anymore. That is also automatic when you get within range of a pad that you want to land on. Not too sure how I feel about that because you might change your mind about landing and then you've got permission so I'm not sure if it automatically retracts that permission when you get further away from it I'm not sure how that works but it is a lot smoother now also the thing that I didn't like about the old landing system is when you went into landing mode when you pressed V to limit your speed to 50 meters a second it would put your speed at zero and then you'd have to gain your speed again however now when you go into landing mode it does not do that so if you come in full throttle and you press N to go into landing mode, it will just reduce you to 50. It won't reduce you to zero, and then you've got to gain up to 50. It will just put you relative to whatever your throttle is. That I quite like. It makes it a lot more fluid. And taking off is a lot more fluid as well, because as soon as you press N to de-engage landing mode, or take off mode, I suppose in this case, then your landing gear comes in, your speed is unrestricted, and you can fly off quite smoothly so it's a lot more polished i do like the landing system i've not had any issues with it and also the way the auto land system works now is they've got three modes so they've got fully manual they've got semi-automatic and then they've got fully automatic i'm not sure how you do the full manual 
other than maybe just not initiating landing mode. That's the only thing I can think of, but then you don't get the landing gear, so I'm not sure how that works. However, the way the auto land works now is when you get within range, and the range is the same as what the old auto landing system would be, if you hold down N, then the ship will take over, and you have to hold down N until you touch down. So if you only want it to do a bit, maybe you just want it to level you off and you want it to get above. So you hold down N, let it level you off, and then maybe you want to do the descent yourself. You can do that. You can hold down N to level it off and then press control or whatever you've got it bound to on your joystick to descend down to the pad. And again, that just makes it a lot more fluid, a lot easier to, to work with. So as well as the landing system and Grim Hex, we also got two new ships. So one of them is the Reliant Core and that's been in concept for quite a while and it's essentially a a little bit of a starter ship but a more expensive starter ship because it is a very sort of multi-role ship it's the reliant core is essentially a cargo variant but it is still very versatile it's a lot like the avenger although it's nothing like the avenger but it is similar in the sense of it is built to sort of do a bit of everything. You can do really anything with it. But it is essentially a very small cargo hauler. A very small little cargo truck, I suppose. And it looks a lot like a moth. It's probably one of my favourite looking ships. It looks really cool. I like the wing design and the chassis design. Pretty much everything. But I love the cockpit. The cockpit is one of my favourite. And it is... A really good ship to look at. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the Reliant Core because I will do a video on it. I'm gonna, I have a Reliant in my hangar, so I am going to take one of them out and do a little flight test with it and just get a feel for exactly how it handles. Because I wasn't in the PTU, so I never got the chance to fly it. In. I know people that were in the PTU got a chance to enjoy it, but I never did, so I don't know how it flies, and I am eager to find out. So the other ship that we got is the MPUV, which is the Argo MPUV, which is a multi-purpose utility vehicle. And again, I've got one of these. I'm not going to keep it. I've got it for other reasons, but I've got one and I will do a little flight test of that later on as well. But essentially, this is a carrier based utility vehicle. We have two variants at the moment, which is the cargo variant and the personnel variant. So the cargo variant is obviously a very small utility cargo hauler. And the personnel variant is basically a very small little taxi. Now, I wouldn't recommend buying these for the verse because they are specific. Well, they're not specific, but they are very sort of geared towards carrier based operations. They're geared towards working on a carrier. I believe they don't have a jump drive, so they can't jump drive. They're, they're essentially meant to be on a carrier. And the reason I don't recommend build uh, buying one of these as much as I love them is because chances are they will come with any ship that is going to make any use of them. So any ship that's big enough to make use of a utility vehicle like this is most likely going to have one as standard. So buying one isn't really that necessary. And even if it doesn't come as standard, it is very much a personal choice if you do want one. I think they do look cool. And I personally picked up the bundle with both of them in. But as I said before, it is for other reasons. I'm not intending to keep the ship. I only bought it for the lifetime insurance because even though lifetime insurance isn't a big deal, I do like lifetime insurance. It just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable with the ships that I've got. So I'm going to be cross chassising those ships over to different ships. So, so yeah, the Argo is very much a utility vehicle. It's not really, I mean, I wouldn't call it a cargo hauler, even though I did. But it's essentially just for moving things around a carrier ship or a bigger ship. Any sort of big ship that can make use of it. And obviously the personnel is just for moving people around a carrier ship. So if you want them to move from the front to the back or something like that then it would be a great ship for that purpose. So also in the update, we got item 2.0, which is a system that they use for items such as weapons. And I believe the suits count as items, but I'm not too sure on that. I 
believe they do, but essentially this is the next version to the items, and item 2.0 got rolled out. I'm not exactly sure what it changes, but I'm assuming it just makes it a little less buggy, uh, etc. So the other pretty big thing, and I say big in the literal sense, is the M7A laser cannon which is the size 5 laser cannon and this is the weapon that the Starfarer was meant to have but we didn't have because there wasn't it wasn't made yet so that is now made I believe that it is now on the Starfarer it is well if you if you know the M7A just by its name there's lots of them it is a laser cannon and it's the size 5 laser cannon it packs a massive massive amount of damage and the very cool thing about this is you could put it on a vanguard obviously it's not dedicated to the starfarer it's just the the ship that the starfarer was meant to have but that doesn't mean it's exclusive it could go at any ship that has a size 5 mount so i'm assuming you could put it on the anvil terrapin when the anvil terrapin is flight ready because that has a size 5 mount though i'm not entirely sure about that but you can put it on Vanguard, etc. And it is just... It's a pretty beasty cannon. I've not tried it out myself yet. But it is a very big cannon. And I can imagine it does an extremely high amount of damage. So that has been it for the 2.5 update. That's all we really got for now. Um, a lot of it... Obviously there's a lot of smaller things on, under the surface. Such as a lot of bug fixes. And... The, the usual sort of things that come out with updates to make the game a lot more stable. I've not noticed much of a performance change, but it does seem a little bit smoother than it was before. But don't don't hold on to that. That's not anything official. I just personally feel it is a little bit smoother, a little bit, bit less buggy. And I will see you guys in the next video. Later, taters.